Houston County 911. Yes, I'm a teacher at Columbus High School. There is a student here with a gun. He has shot out a window. I believe one of them has um, um, I've been calling my high school. I, I don't know what's in my shoulder. If it was just the last thing you do, what? Okay, has anybody been injured, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the school is in a panic, and I'm in the library. I've got students down under the table, kids. Heads under the table. Um, kids are screaming. Some of the teachers um, are, you know, trying to take control of We need to leave here. Okay. Columbine High School became an epicenter of tragedy. It was in my uh, math class, and all of a sudden, like, five or six kids came running in, and they all told us to get down. Dozens of students that are fleeing for safety. They are monitoring the subject right now. He went from the third floor to the second floor. Suspects have been found inside the building. We should be safe at school. Yeah, it should be a safe place. This time, shots fired as Deer Creek Middle School students were preparing to go home. Security failures in the Parkland School Massacre. Kindergartners to fourth graders went to Sandy Hook Elementary School today to learn and play. At least two people have been killed in a shooting on the campus of the University of North Carolina. I saw the shooter. I saw him shoot again. Columbine was a mass school shooting that occurred on April 20th, 1999. Two male seniors named Eric Harris and Dylan Claybold had planted an explosive made of propane tanks throughout the school cafeteria and proceeded to open fire and throw homemade pipe bombs while walking around on campus. More than 20 people were injured and 15 people were killed, including Harris and Klebold, from taking their own lives. Since then, an average statistic, according to CNN, states that a shooting occurs every 12 days. This horrifying event that occurred all the way back in Columbine High School in 1999 was very shocking for that time. But in present day, this is clear to see that these treacherous acts are not as rare anymore. The story of what really happened at Columbine has been passed down in multiple different ways, mostly because of the release of false information provided in many forms of the media, such as news reports, articles, and posts on social media. However, the story behind Harrison Claybold's actions are a bit more complex than what people assumed. According to multiple news reports made on the day of the event, Eric Harris and Dylan Claybold were often referred to as the outcasts from Columbine, who shot up the school as revenge of being victims of bullying. But what a lot of the public does not know is that Harris and Claybold were well-known students who had many friends and weren't known as victims of bullying. To get an insight on how students and faculty feel about the subject and the safety of their very own workplace, we interviewed multiple administrators, teachers, and students discussing their personal take on the safety of Santa Sue. Too many. <laughs> no idea, but a lot. I don't have an exact number, but I would guess that um, just knowing what I know about some state law, that it's probably close to 50 to 60 percent. It makes me feel unsafe that we're allowing people to have weapons that have such potential for destruction to be able to get these weapons without any sort of background check. It makes me upset because there's a lot of people that try and buy guns legally, and then there's people that go and find loopholes to get them illegally, and that hurts the legal gun buyers who want them for recreational use or for hunting or for just general survival, which those people deserve to have their guns, and these other people are just hurting their fundamental rights. I know that the Columbine shooting occurred April 20th, 1999. It was carried out by two white teenage males. Um, they got their guns at gun shows, which allowed them to get them without any like little background check. And um, a lot of states still have that gun show loophole where background checks don't have to be performed at gun shows. And even states like California, um, UC Davis has done studies, and they've seen that like the laws in place are still violated continuously. So I think we need to close those loopholes and also enforce them like, enforce the laws already existing? Uh, probably too much. I, I mean, I mean, not, uh, obviously not all of it, you guys have researched it, um, but having lived through it, um, it was kind of weird. Um, not lived through it in the sense that I was in it, please don't misunderstand me. I mean in the sense like uh, how it affected popular culture at the time, since that was the year I graduated high school. But um, 
you know, the two kids, socially outcast, um, decided to take revenge upon, um, or at least make themselves famous in doing so, uh, this sort of um, uh, high school society that they were involved with, right? Well, you said that Eric and Dylan were outcasts, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Eric and Dylan, um, Eric Harris and Dylan Claybold, uh, the shooters, were actually well-known boys on campus. Really? And were not victims of bullying at Columbine High. Um, they had a plan to bomb their school rather than just the shooting. The shooting was their plan B, but mm. their initial uh, decision was to bomb the school and shoot stragglers, survivors. See, media narrative. Exactly. Exactly our point. God, there were like two last week, um, all the time. Um, at least, I, I'm guessing, but at least one a week. I think this kind of school shooting a little more than once a week since Stoneman Douglas. I would say about two to three times a month. Um, I read somewhere that the one happens um, in the United States, um, something like one of every um, 38 days. I mean, that's a, I mean that's alarming the the thing the thing is is um, I think about school shootings too is that um, none of us are can be naive about the the you know the defense being well it, it, it can happen here um, all of these communities think that um, but I what I what I hope students understand is that the likelihood of this happening is still so remote I feel San Jose is a really safe campus. I do think there's a majority of issues that San Jose hasn't addressed, including the fact that none of our yard duties are trained for school shootings. Also, all of our classrooms have connecting doors. So if a shooter was to come on campus and get into one classroom, that entire building is now compromised because teachers are taught not to lock those connecting doors, which they need to either lock or have permanently locked or be removed because that is a very big safety hazard for students. I personally do feel safe on school campus just in my day to day and I like that we don't have fences and makes our school seem more inviting and like more of the, it's a choice to be here but I think it's a problem that when a fire alarm is pulled my first reaction isn't to get up and go and save myself because there like, could be a fire. I have to think about how in the past fire alarms have been used to lure students out of their classes to like have higher like casualty counts for mass shootings and like that's it like compromising my safety also like just knowing the fact that someone could like have a gun and transport it over state lines or even just get a gun in california and then use it to like have such detrimental impacts is like really scary okay um that is a loaded complicated question um i'll, I'll say it like this um you know seven eight nine years ago when i started teaching uh, the thought about where my classroom is on campus was not something I considered. But, um, you know, starting over the last couple of years, I've, you know, where is my classroom on campus? How likely am I to get shot if something happens is a major concern now. And um, being the fact that I am a teacher, there is an inherent bias uh, and resulting in how I do gun control and gun control legislation, but I don't think it's unwarranted given the fact that my safety is actually under threat and the safety of other people. And I also have to consider, like, I shouldn't have to, in a position like I am in as a teacher, worry about, like, am I going to save my students' lives or am I going to be there for my children when they're older? That should not be an opportunity cost for me. San Jose actually doesn't have a school, sh school shooting protocol. When I talked to the administration last year and I talked to the police department and our mayor, they said that none of the CD schools actually have a school shooting protocol. Well, I mean, I remember our fr my freshman year, we had a lockdown that was due to a bomb threat. And I mean, I would assume that perhaps like the procedure is the same where we just lock all the classroom doors shut off the lights, close the blinds, and we don't speak. I'm not quite sure how effective this is, but I also really can't think of any other way to circumvent it. I know there are procedures in place to like protect us from an active shooter, but I think they're all like in response to someone already being on campus. 
like we have our lockdown drills that we practice constantly. And lockdown drills have actually, like studies have shown that they just hurt students' mental health without like improving student safety. Like the teachers know to lock the doors and like, but also like we all do the school like shooting drills together. The like school shooter is going to be from our school. They've done the same drills. They know our weak points. They know like the whole procedure. So I don't feel those really keep us safe. And I think we need more precautions and keeping us safe from guns getting in the hands of wrong people. I, I feel really safe on school campus because we have a partnership with the Simi Valley Police Department. Um, Simi Valley Police Department and the Unified School District connect. Uh, Commander Shorts over at the Police Department sets up a, a, a contingency plan and all vehicles inside um, the, um, the police cars have a standing plan in place um, where we're going to be evacuated, who they contact. Um, the school district has invested a lot of money in, for school safety. Um, the school district recently purchased, I think it was about 5,000 walkie-talkies, and these walkie-talkies not only can you communicate to school personnel, but if we needed to contact the police instantly, we can contact the police through these walkie-talkies. Um, the school district has also incorporated using bond money cameras throughout their schools. Um, so I feel really safe here. You know, Simi Valley is kind of at the forefront for um, a partnership between schools and, um, and uh, law enforcement. Um, as you know, Santa Susana is an open campus, you know, and we do have campus supervisors who are lined up. Nobody gets on campus. Sometimes the parents get upset by that when we question them, why are they here? Um, obviously, we want to protect the sanctity of the school, and anybody who doesn't belong here, you know, is going to get vetted. Um, and the ability to have, um, you know, communication and a partnership with the police department who do active shooter trainings is very um, indu indicative to how... Um, important it is for the school district and for the city. There's talk of it, there's um, ostensibly mental support services and things like that, but I don't see anything really happening as far as training or anything that goes. Um, you know, we talk about it, you know, what do you do? You bar the door, you throw things at the intruder, etc. But, you know, actually practicing going through it, it's not happening. Um, so, you know, would it be would it be a real problem if it happened? Absolutely, I think so. I think as teachers, we've kind of become the front line in defense for that for, in a lot of ways, where in like, uh, we are the ones who notice things before other people. We are the ones who develop relationships. And so I think, if anything, it's kind of prompted me to be better at relationships with students and reach out to students that, um, you know, I wouldn't normally be comfortable reaching out when I'm pressing a little bit more on like, hey, you don't look like you're doing well, how can I help you? Um, so I think that's that's probably the primary defense. I don't, but we're not getting trained in that either. That's just, you know, certain teachers do that and others don't. I don't really know because I don't think there's a sure way to protect everyone on a gun-free zone from a gunman. I think you just have to run. Well, I definitely think that right now, uh, perhaps there is a little bit too much leeway with who can come in and then who can come out. Um, I would say that there could be more action taken by ad admin to go through and make sure that students are coming on campus without firearms. Um, like I said, I think Santa Sue is pretty safe, um, but given that we've seen like Stoneman Douglas, for example, is I would say a normal high school, and yet that tragedy happened there. I, I think it would be good for Santa Susana to have a school resource officer, just like see me and Royal. And I think it's not fair for our school not to have one. And because if something were to happen, our school resource officers that see me. And on average, it takes him five to ten minutes to get here, which within that time, Sanisu is going to be in some big trouble. And I think that alone would change a lot of things on campus. I think one thing we need is HR8, like just universal background checks, nice and simple. Um, also, I don't believe that we need to decrease gun ownership to decrease gun like deaths. Um, I think rural states like Vermont and also just like other countries like Iceland have shown that they can have high li levels of gun ownership, but also just low levels of gun deaths because of the policies they have in place. Like they have a lot of um, testing and you have to take a day off work to go get trained and you have to have your guns stored properly because a lot of gun deaths are from suicide. 
and it's problematic when like parents leave their guns in places or tell the kids the code to like the gun safe because like now more than ever like teenagers in america are dealing with mental health issues which can be attributed to a lot of things but like existential threat of climate change or just like you can contribute to social media and screen time so when students are having these mental health problems it's bad that we're giving them access to guns which they can hurt themselves or others with so i think we need to have more policies in place um at like three day like waiting period to like decrease number of suicides you can't just go buy a gun and shoot yourself the same day um again universal background checks training courses licenses we like regu regulate cars so much i don't understand why we don't regulate someone having like armor piercing weaponry the same way i also don't think that we need any weapons of war on our streets i think there's just no justification for that also i think if you have to be 21 to drink it makes sense that you'd have to be 21 to like own a rifle to discover how the students at our very own school felt about school safety, we published a survey with three questions concerning how people felt at school and whether a fence should be built surrounding it. We found that at our school, about 83% agree that they feel physically safe, while 17% do not. Also, 60% of students at our school do not want any gates or fences surrounding our campus, yet 40% agree that they would feel safer if gates or fences were established. Lastly, 55% of our students disagree with the fact that our school safety drills and procedures effectively prepare us for emergency situations. Thank you. Although a lot of kids feel safe at school, there are still a good amount of students who don't. Safety procedures need to be put in place to fix this continuing issue. Students shouldn't be afraid to come to a place of education and creativity. There are multiple examples of people calling to action about these issues. The March for Our Lives protests are a great example. School safety is one of the biggest priorities our nation should have, and from here on we ask that school safety procedures be a consistent learning lessons for students and faculty.